everyone, Cadaver Kelly here, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the new album Black Swan by Push Button Press. So stick around. So, before I get into this album review, let me address the elephant in the room. Yes, it's been a very long time since I've posted a video on YouTube. I think the last video I posted was probably July of 2020, and we are now into 2021. Happy New Year, by the way. I am not officially back to regular uploads. I need a few more months for that, and it's mostly due to stuff going on in my offline life. I will come back with a video to explain that a little bit and let you know the direction that I plan on taking with my channel moving forward but I am breaking my hiatus for this one exception because our friends over at Push Button Press are about to drop a new album and that will be this Friday January 8th the album is called Black Swan for those of you who are not familiar with Push Button Press they are a post-punk and dark wave band based in Tampa Florida Last time I was down in Tampa, I actually got to hang out with Jim and Jet from Push Button Press, and they are some of the nicest guys that you'll ever meet. Really cool hanging out with them. I can't wait to get back down there one day to see them again and see everyone down in the Tampa scene. I have kept in contact with Jim Walker, the frontman for Push Button Press, and he was kind enough to send me an early copy of their album or early digital copy of this album. This is going to be their second release on Cold Transmission Records. And if you've never heard of Cold Transmission Records, fantastic record label. All the artists on that label, so good. One of my favorite record labels. So check out the Cold Transmission website. I'll link that in the description as well as the Push Button Press Bandcamp page where you should definitely go to on Friday to check out this album. Similarly to album reviews I've done in the past, I'm going to go through this album track by track and give an analysis on the sound, so instrumentals, vocals, that sort of thing. I don't really do lyrical analysis. I'm sure there's some great creators out there that could focus more on the lyrical side of music. So let's jump right into the tracks of this album. Track number one is called The End of Time. I'm going to be reading off of notes for this like I've done in the past for previous album reviews. This song immediately inundates the listener with hopeful, upbeat instrumentals. Jim's vocals come in at the 22 second mark and the track shifts into a darker sound. And it almost sounded death rock reminiscent. I know they're a post-punk dark wave band, but there were definitely almost death rock sounding hints throughout this album. I'm not sure if that was intentional or subconscious on the part of Push Button Press, but there were sounds within this album that reminded me a little bit of death rock. So that dark sound carried throughout this track. This one is a little more on the rock side, but Jet does have a nice synthy interlude around the two minute mark. I fucking loved this track. This might even be my favorite on the album. Hard to say, there were some good ones on here. For some reason, this track made me nostalgic for the 2000s, but in a good way. I don't know why, I can't put my finger on it but it kind of transported me back to that place. You know how sometimes music has a way of doing that, evoking certain feelings or memories, and this track for some reason took me back to the aughts. Track number two is called Trace. So Push Button Press uh, released a music video for this song already. This is one of two songs that they released early ahead of the album release. And the music video is really cool. Postpunk.com did a write-up on it. They called the 
music video Hitchcockian or um, compared it to um, Hitchcock films, which I can see that. I thought it, you could also call it maybe Lynchian. Um, it had sort of that art house, black and white, eerie vibe that could have almost been like something out of a racer head. But enough about the theme music video. You can check that out for yourself. I'll link it in the description. Uh, on to the track analysis. This track is very push button press, classic pu push button press. You've got a very dark post punk basis, you got some sexy bass lines, and this is more of a dark wave sound than the first track was. There's a little more synth layered into it and it gives it like a really eerie atmosphere which goes great with that eerie music video they released for it really creative choice for the video. I like what they did with it. Track number three is called Vril. Right off the bat, the percussion and bass lines were so punctuated and on point. This was a more mellow goth wave track, um, sort of that sound that uh, Obscura Undead coined goth wave. This track definitely pulled inspiration from early post-punk, so if the first two tracks on this album had more of that third, fourth wave style sound to it. This had a little more of that first wave sound, maybe second wave a little bit. Of course, it was done in a very original way, but for those of you who are really into that kind of like 80s post-punk sound, you might like this track. The synth work really shined through on this one more so than the first two tracks, and Jim did a really beautiful job on the vocals. This was a really pretty track. Track number four is called Dim. The initial guitar riff in the intro had a little bit of a depth rock sound to it. Again, I kind of mentioned earlier that this album does almost have hints of death rock to it here and there, even though it is like a post-punk dark wave band, post-punk dark wave album. They're kind of mixing different genres and different sound influences and I do really appreciate that about Push Button Press. They have their own distinct sound. The rock and electronic elements in this track had fairly consistent and equal weight. It was a really rich production mix, lots of auditory stimuli, and overall I really liked this one. Track number five is called Broken Faces. This track starts off immediately setting a really gothy atmosphere. The percussion pattern and bass lines came in swinging. It was a very second wave, the gothest of all waves. Why do I feel like there's gonna be 90s diehard people in the comment section trying to fight me on that? I'm sorry! You can't get gother than sisters. I mean, Andrew Eldridge, the fact that he refuses to admit his music is goth somehow makes him seem even more goth. Anyway, this track, the synth and vocals added a very unique atmosphere to it. It was flawlessly paced, flawlessly mixed. This was one of my favorite tracks on the album. Really balanced and again, just the pacing of it, that pacing, that timing, it was very well thought out, very intentional and I like that. Track number six is called Black Swan. This one let the synth work come in and shine right away. The bass lines slapped on this one. The bass lines slapped through a lot of this album, but the bass line definitely slapped on this track. Jim kind of took his vocals in a little more of a goth rock direction on this one at certain points, especially in the chorus, sounded uh, very goth rock, the style of vocals. There were some really interesting percussion patterns happening in this one too, and you could really hear the human element to the drumming. These days it can be very hard to tell whether or not you're listening to a drum machine or an actual human drummer, especially in the more like gothy genres, but this one had some impressive percussion patterns in it. The drum lines really added depth to the track and overall I, I really like this one. Track number seven is called Spectacle not to be confused with their previous album, Spectacle One. Both the guitar and synth work on this track were flexing so hard. They sounded amazing. The vocals and lyrics were super dark and we love dark stuff here on this channel. There was actually some jam guitaring in this one, which is cool because that's not something you always get to see much of in gothy, darker genres like this. So uh, I, it, 
I could tell that they had some fun with the guitaring in this. Track number eight is called Scars Within Walls. Once again, the way the guitar is styled, hints of death rock. That's just my opinion. And I love death rock, by the way, so that's a good thing. The synth accented the guitar and vocals nicely. I really like the vocals in this one. They were gothy, but in a modern way. The musical interlude in the middle of this song slapped so hard, you guys. I liked this track from the start, but I really loved it more and more the further it went along because it was really interesting. It kept me guessing. Overall, definitely one of my favorite tracks on the album. And and track number nine, the final track on the album, is called Cold is the Ground That Lie Above Me. This one almost had a punkier sound to it. It was still dark post-punk, but the guitar work that they used at times could easily be incorporated into a punk track. Not the whole way through the track, but at certain points, the way the guitar sounded, you could take that same guitar or piece of guitar line and put it into a punk track and it wouldn't sound out of place. And I love punk so definitely like that. Also Jim Walker's vocals on this track were a bit sinister and I loved that. There was a very brief synth interlude towards the end of this song. I don't think you could even call it an interlude because it was brief but there was a brief moment that let the synth shine towards the end of the track. So shout out to Jet. This was overall just a cool track. Really cool sound to it. So this album did not disappoint. Overall, really loved it. And one of my favorite things about Push Button Press, and I mentioned this a few times while I was going through the tracks there, they have their own distinct sound. When I'm listening to a Push Button Press song, like if I hear a Push Button Press song come on, I know immediately it's Push Button Press. They're not doing any sort of like formulaic, copy of a copy sort of styling and I really appreciate that about Push Button Press. They do find a way to play music that fits within these gothy genres but is a sound all of their own. So again, I will put all the relevant links in the description. Please go to the Push Button Press Bandcamp page on Friday and grab this album for yourself. It is awesome. Thank you again to Jim Walker for the early digital copy of the album so I could film this review. And thank you to everyone for watching. Again, I will be returning to regular uploads, I promise. I think that's probably going to be early spring, at which point I will upload a video announcing my official return to YouTube and kind of covering what you can expect from me from there. Thanks everyone, I'll see you in the spring.